short story reading. This short story comes from my own writings. I had to do it for a university assignment, and uh, my aim was to write Thomas turned into his suburban driveway. The engine sputtered to a stop, and Thomas prayed, as he did every evening, that it would start again tomorrow. For a moment, he rested his head on the worn steering wheel, eyes closed, as the efforts of the day's work caught up to him and a slight ache settled into his body. of the evening was interrupted as Thomas's phone hummed on the passenger seat next to him. Wearily, he flipped it open. Working late tonight, real late. Don't wait up, X. Thomas winced at the blunt message his wife had sent. Things had certainly been tense lately. What with their financial concerns, the two of them taking more hours at work and having to relocate. But Dahlia had never actively avoided coming home. Nor did Thomas feel particularly eager to spend the night alone for the first time in their new place, although it was far from new. It was, as the realtor had put it several days ago, Thomas's phone clicked quietly as he thumbed a reply. Hope it's not too bad. Drive safe. Love you, X. He let out a small sigh and unbuckled his seatbelt. Trained as he was, his night would not be any better spent out in his car. The street was still and cool as Thomas shuffled up the steps of the porch along the front of the modest house, toward the door. As he crossed in front of the windows, his reflection joined him, almost as dark as a shadow, owing to the fading sunlight. It was just when he had reached the door that Thomas paused and shuddered. Did he really just see what he thought he saw? Slowly, he backed up to once again stand in front of the last window along the porch. His reflection stared back at him, the two of them holding their breath. For in the last moments before it would have disappeared, as Thomas stepped out of reach of the window, he could have sworn he saw his reflection stop walking, turn and watch Thomas continue. Now, of course, his reflection did not move. Thomas scrunched up his eyes and rubbed at the bridge of his nose. Yeah, I'm losing it, he thought. Once more, he approached the front door, jammed in the key and lurched inside. After an unappetizing microwave 
dinner and a lukewarm brew. Thomas found himself splayed out on the beaten up recliner in the lounge, gaze fixed unseemly on the mute television glowing softly in the corner. He thought about Dahlia. He thought about when they were first married, and brief flashes of her smiling and laughing with him played over in his mind, causing a homely warmth to spread across his chest. And then he thought of the past few months, the constant fights, the silent mornings, walking on eggshells around each other. The warmth receded as Thomas's eyelids drooped, his wife's earlier message looping in his mind. Don't wait up. sunk into the depths of night. Thomas woke with a start, disoriented but alert. He bolted upright in the recliner, breath held, trying to figure out what had torn him from his sleep. The silence made his ears ring. realized he was staring at the blank screen of his television. He hadn't realized until now just how alarmed he actually was. Perched in its own recliner, his reflection glared back at him, aghast, almost like a deer in headlights. Thomas shook his head and forced his body to relax. Whatever it was that had caused him to wake was certainly not here now. He looked back at the television and watched in the reflection as his panicked expression faded away to be replaced only by confusion. Had the television been on when he had drifted off? He picked up the remote and mashed the power button several times. The screen stayed blank, but a sharp crackling emitted from the back as the unit tried its best to turn on. Thomas was filled with utter resignation. The old set had died as he slept. He figured it had probably blown a gasket on the inside somewhere, which must have woken him up. There was no way they could logically afford to replace this right now. Thomas snarled in frustration and whipped the remote across the room. It clattered loudly against the cheap wooden stand the television was seated on. And he scowled at both it and the screen as he climbed out of the chair to leave the room. His reflection scowled back. Thomas flicked on the light in his bedroom. Boxes from the move were still scattered about haphazardly, but the room itself remained, for the most part, unfurnished. Only the double bed he and Dahlia shared, their wobbly nightstand, and their standing mirror opposite the bed had been set up so far. The days had gotten away from them. Thomas stripped off his clothes and laid them over a stack of boxes by the bed. He took the scrunched up quilt and waved it out evenly over the mattress before checking his phone to see if Dahlia had left a message. Not a word. His mood at an all-time low, he flicked off the light his face in his pillow. As he once more drifted into dreams, the bed in the mirror stirred. Thomas's reflection sat up. Dahlia fumbled with the lock on the front door in the dark. She had come home much later than she had intended. No doubt there would be a fight about it tomorrow. She sighed as the tumbler finally turned and she stepped inside. From where she stood, she could see the yellow light of 
was bent over in front of the mirror frame, which was now almost bare. He was collecting the broken shards of glass that lay in front of the frame in a garbage bag, humming to himself all the while. Dahlia noticed his hand was bloodied. Tom, what's happened? Thomas whipped around, startled to hear the voice behind him. He clutched at the garbage bag in his bloody hand. coming in and tried to stop myself falling. Put my hand basically through the mirror. There's nothing left of it. Thomas muttered with a sheepish look. Dahlia sighed. No, it's fine. Look, there's still one piece in the frame. Perfect. That's all we need when we're getting dressed, really. The rest of the mirror was just a waste. Thanks. She snapped. Doll, it's fine. These things are cheap. It's the telly that's going to cost a pretty penny. Thomas trailed off. Dahlia sagged. She was exhausted and did not have it in her to deal with this right now. She changed into shorts and a shirt and pulled the covers over her head as Thomas finished picking up the broken glass and cleaned his hands. He crossed it to turn out the light. His finger on the switch glanced at the broken mirror. A single wide, desperate eye peered back. From inside, the real Thomas could do nothing but watch as the thing from the mirror grinned back at him and turned out the light. So that's the end of One Night Alone, a short story. strict word count, so there were parts in the story that weren't as descriptive as I would have liked, and there was another event that I kind of wanted to write about, but I was already sort of over the limit, so I had to leave it out. guy's reflection just biding its time waiting for him to be alone and being able to basically use any medium such as the the mirror the uh, windows at the start and uh, the reflection in the in the broken television which by the way it broke using its power somehow you know uh, in an attempt to swap places with this man. And uh, basically the, the scariest part that I was trying to get across was that, you know, you've been, your life is about to be taken over and you have no idea why or what this thing wants. And it's basically the, the unknown and the, the cliffhanger that is where the main is supposed to come from. So I had a lot of fun writing it. Um, it had been a while since I'd written anything uh, creative like that. And, uh, you know, it was nice to flex the old creative muscles. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you think.